Hello everyone. Thank you guys for tuning in. I am your Dallas Fort Worth real estate agent, Jaran Ramsey. And today we'll discuss six critical steps that you need to take in order to purchase your home successfully. Before we dig right into it, I would love to start with a quote by Jim Rohn. In order for things to change, we must change. And the biggest hurdle that us as real estate agents we come across is when a potential clients or clients, um, they don't have the right attitude when it comes to home ownership, right? So we need to change our mindset concerning buying a home or what it takes in order to purchase a home successfully. There's certainly some myths out there. There's some misinformation about there. So we'll just unpack a few myths and we'll discuss how to get through those barriers and present you guys with the right information. The first myth that we'll discuss is this. I can't afford to purchase a home because I have student loans. The reason why this is a myth and this information is false is because most lenders only use a percentage of your total loan balance. So let's say a half of a point or 1% of your student loans towards your debt to income ratio. So just because you have student loans, it does not disqualify you from being pre-approved uh, for your home purchase. Myth number two myth number two is this i can't afford to put 20 percent down towards my home purchase another reason why this is a myth is because you have certain governmental programs allow you to put down three and a half percent down which is the fha loan and some conventional programs allow you to put as little as three percent down so you do not need to put 20% down or more in order to purchase a home. The reason behind that and why some people may put 20% down on a home is to avoid private mortgage insurance. And private mortgage insurance is pretty much insurance that you as a home buyer pay for should you default on that loan and it helps to secure or cover the loan company should you go into foreclosure or you can't afford to make any more payments. So you don't have to put 20% down. What my rule of thumb is, if my clients are financing, I try to remind them, let's consider the, the cost of the math. I think putting 5% down should be the max if you're financing, because if you do the math and you see that putting 5% down versus 10% to 20%, it really doesn't make a huge difference in your monthly payment. And those extra funds can be diversified into investing in other things or enjoying life or our savings. But my general rule of thumb is let's, let's not do more than five or 10% down if you're financing. But you as a home buyer, feel free to do whatever you want, but I just don't think it's financially smart to put too many eggs in one basket. So I'm, I'm happy to debunk that myth uh, for you that you do not need to put 20% down in order to purchase your home. Myth number three, I need a perfect credit score before I purchase my home. Another reason why this is a myth is because lenders, they require a wide range of credit scores in order to get qualified. So what I'm saying is this, you don't need a 700 credit score or an 800 credit score in order to be qualified for your home purchase. The minimum for some FHA loan products could be as low as 580. And if you're considering a conventional loan, it could be 620. But most lenders, they have a variety of uh, factors when it comes to getting qualified. So just always keep that in mind. And your idea of perfection could be, oh, uh, you know, oh, I need a, a, a 800 credit score or I need an 850. 
No, that is not the case. So if you guys have a low credit score that's in 580, or if you're flirting in the 600 range, you can still get qualified. Now, with all things being said, the higher your score is, the better interest rate that you could potentially receive. But let's be honest, some people, we don't, we don't all have an 850 or better <laughs> credit score. So do not let the perfection of credit score prevent you from uh, potentially being qualified. The last myth that we'll discuss is this. I can't afford to hire a real estate agent. Truth be told, when it comes to working with a real estate professional, in most cases, nothing hardly ever comes out of your pocket. When we work with sellers or builders, the sellers typically pays both their listing agent and me as a buyer's agent for bringing them a ready, willing, and able qualified buyer. So it's simply a cost of doing business that is usually compensated by the seller when it comes to a home. And in most cases, if a real estate agent, if they are asking you <laughs> to pay them up front, out of pocket, prior to you closing on the home, run. <laughs> you, you should not be paying your real estate agent out of pocket, especially if they haven't done their job successfully at closing on your home. So always keep that in mind. Essentially, working with a buyer's agent is at no cost to you. Now that we have debunked a few myths that are looming out there in society, let's dig right into the six important steps that you need to take in order to close on your home. Now, let me backtrack for a minute. Every home, every transaction, and every market is simply different. This is coming from a bird's eye view, and majority of people are gonna take these necessary steps. And it's not to say that a unique situation or monkey wrench might be thrown into the equation. So this is just simply coming from a high level overview. And I solely believe that no two transactions are alike. So if you take two of the same type of buyers with similar incomes, credit scores, you name it, they will still have a different experience or the transactions may differentiate just a little bit. So um, just continue to stay tuned in as we outline these six steps that are needed and watch until the very end and let me know your thoughts, your feedback. Step number one is simply getting pre-approved. And this is reaching out to a lender to pretty much get qualified. You're confirming your buying power. You're confirming your purchasing capacity. And in order to do that, lenders are going to require a few documents that are needed, which don't take no more than 10 or 15 minutes. So they'll need your W-2s. They'll need uh, proof of your last two year tax returns. They're going to need the most recent pay stubs within the last 30 days. They're going to do an employment verification uh, check. They'll also need uh, proof of any other assets. So if you have a 401k, if you have any other retirement accounts, they're going to verify all of this information to help come up with a figure to see how much home you can afford. Followed by your credit check. They're also looking to see, seeing that, you know, if you have uh, any car loans, student loans, whatever the case. And they use all of this information in order to come up with a formula to determine how much home you can afford. And what usually backfires is when clients are not honest about how much money they make, truly. So if your gross annual income is a hundred thousand don't put that you make 130,000 or 140,000 because underwriters and the rest of their back office team they're going to trust but verify this information and this is by doing the frontline work of collecting all of these documents so nothing doesn't backfire and you don't end up closing and it's not just because you know lenders they want to be in your business or they're being nosy. What they're trying to determine is that, hey, if we lend you this money because you're financing to purchase a home, we just want to make sure that you can pay us back and that you have some sort of stability. Step number two, home tours. It's my favorite part 
And right after you get pre-approved from your lender and you confirm your monthly payment amount, this is where we set up appointments and we schedule home tours based on your home affordability. Now, this is where we discuss your likes and your dislikes. We'll ask you a series of questions, like for example, do you want a pre-existing home versus a new construction home? Do you prefer an HOA community versus a non-HOA community? How many bedrooms do you want? How many bathrooms do you want? Do you prefer an open concept? Do you require a swimming pool? Do you want your primary suite on the first floor? Do you want a two-story home? So those are just examples of questions that we ask just to make sure that we focus on your likes because sometimes the home buying process can be overwhelming if we don't give you a sense of direction. Also, we have to consider proximity. Do you have a proximity requirement in regards to uh, staying close to the inner city versus more rural areas, right? Step number three. Step number three is where we submit your offer based on the one. And the one is your home. <laughs> so with that being said, what we do is after we tour the series of homes and out of the bunch, we see that you have found the one we simply put together some comps. Comps are comparables within the neighborhood, right? So if homes are, let's just say $400,000, we don't wanna lowball the other side by submitting an offer at 300,000, right? They may not even respond. They may already understand that's not a fair shake, right? And within our comps, we'll see how fast homes are selling by looking at the current days on market, and at what price point or value. So remember, just because we submit an offer, it doesn't guarantee that the seller is going to accept it. So we have to be prepared for maybe a counter offer. We have to be prepared for some negotiating and a few other things. But step number three, this is where we officially submit an offer. And if the seller accepts, it's gonna take on average of maybe 30 days to officially close, which means the ownership from the seller now moves on to you as the buyer. So keep that in mind after we submit an offer and negotiating could take anywhere between maybe a day or two max. If that, uh, we could get an answer the same day. It's gonna take you 30 days for you to call your new place home. Step number four, which is the home inspection. The home inspection, in my opinion, it's mandatory on every purchase, even a new construction home. The truth is this, on every home, we're going to find something. If you receive a home inspection report that is blank, I would question that home inspector. So truth be told, it's probably what you don't want to hear. Even a home that appears to be perfect, we're going to find something. Now, what we have to determine is that based on our findings, is it worth a deal breaker? No, no. No, no. Is it worth you backing out of the deal? Because we are going to find something that's cosmetic related and cosmetic imperfections and deficiencies, that is on pretty much every home. A home inspector is going to point that out. But what we want to really pay attention on and focus on is the plumbing, the roof condition, foundation. We want to pay attention to the HVAC mechanicals, termites. Those are the heavy hitters, right? So we want to make sure that those elements that I just explained are in good condition. And if there is a deficiency, we need to gauge to see if it's uh, worth getting fixed. Uh, can the seller take care of it prior to closing? But we need to be mindful that we are going to find something and the home inspection is there to protect you and to really confirm the deficiencies on the interior and exterior of the home. And if it were me, I would not skip out on a home inspection. Home inspections could range anywhere between $300 on the low end to the high sevens or eights 
depending on the square footage of the home or if it has a swimming pool or if it's a like a multi-family home so do not let spending a couple hundred dollars prevent you from not protecting your investment right not getting a home inspection could cost you way more than spending a couple hundred dollars on the front end step number five step number five is what i like to call the financing period this is where you as the buyer we should be careful in handling our finances we don't want to take out additional debts additional loans we don't want to purchase vehicles or finance any large purchases because it alters our credit profile our credit worthiness and our debt to income ratio that lenders confirm on the front end. So during this period, um, lenders are doing just further due diligence. They'll go out and do another employment verification check just to make sure that you are still employed. And if you change jobs, that could highly impact you. So during this period, lenders are just pretty much putting the finishing touches on your profile. Also, they're going to send an appraiser out. So an appraiser is gonna make sure that the home is worth our offer price, right? We wanna make sure that the lenders do not over lend on the property. And the appraisal and the inspection are two different things, right? Like stated before, the inspection just really confirms if there are any deficiencies or any imperfections with the home because you don't wanna buy a lemon, right, <laughs> on a house. Secondly, the appraisal confirms the value of the home, right? Remember 2008 crisis where homes just lost a lot of their value. I imagine those values have went up by now, but lenders do not want to over lend on that asset. Now, our last and final step is preparing to close. When we prepare to close, we are simply scheduling a final walkthrough of the home. We need to make sure that the home is in the same condition as it was when we first toured the property. Also, if we negotiated any seller repairs, this is our opportunity to verify that those imperfections or deficiencies have been fixed along with requesting documentation from the seller, such as receipts with the company's information listed on the document. Also, will receive the official clear to close from the lending company. This is where they have done all of their homework, they have done all of their due diligence, they collected all of the information that is needed in order to officially finance your home purchase. And also, during the prepare to close, Title will send you the final figures that are needed in order to officially close. You have your down payment, and then you have your closing costs. Closing costs, they could range anywhere between 2% on the low end to 4%. And these are miscellaneous fees, title fees, underwriting fees, etc. These are just fees that come along with the home buying process and as a result of receiving service from a title company to successfully facilitate the transfer of ownership between the seller and you as the buyer who will be the new homeowner. Now the good thing is that once you close your down payment and everything is due and you have nothing else to worry about and you are at the tail end of it, you have closed, the home is officially yours. So I hope you guys enjoyed the six critical steps that are needed in order to purchase a home. Again, my name is Jaren Ramsey. My license number is 724519 and my contact information will be down below and i'll also have a booking link if you guys need a more um, exclusive consultation